All right, good evening, YouTube. I hope all is well. We are going to continue with Job. First, I want to say thank you to those who have subscribed to my channel. I ask that you hit the like button, share the uh, channel. Um, if you're interested in personal reading, you can check out my website at Kenyatta's Intuition at Yahoo.com. All right. So we are now on chapter 22 of Job. Let's see what we have here. All right. Eliphaz, Eliphaz's third speech. Then Eliphaz the Timonite answered and said, Can a man be profitable unto God, as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself? Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous, or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Okay, it's, it's you know, we are talking about God here, in other words. All right, is it you know, to his benefit that you're righteous. <laughs> okay. To God's benefit that you're righteous, okay, or that you're perfect. Will he reprove thee for fear of thee? Will he enter with thee into judgment? Okay. Is not thy wickedness great and thine iniquities infinite? Wow. Will he reprove thee for fear of thee? Okay. He's not afraid of you. Okay. Uh, or let's see what the other word might be. Well, this just says fear, okay? Or because of your fear of him, okay? This is in the notes here. Or uh, will he enter into judgment with thee? Of course not. Is it not thy wickedness great and thine iniquities infinite? Okay, you might have been, you know, upright or, you know, righteous or whatever, but, you, you know, your iniquities are infinite. Your wickedness is great, okay? For thou hast taken a pledge from thy brother for naught, and stripped the naked of their clothing. Thou hast not given water to the weary to drink, and thou hast withholden bread from the hungry. But as for the mighty man, he had the earth, and the honorable man dwelt in it. Thou hast sent windows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. Therefore snares are round about thee, and sudden fear troubleth thee, or darkness that thou canst not see, and abundance of waters cover thee. Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold the height of the stars, how high they are. And thou sayest, How doth God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood, which said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Yea, he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad, and the innocent laugh them to scorn, whereas our substance is not cut down, but the remnant of them the fire consumeth. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt, shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also a decree, excuse me, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island of the innocent, and it is delivered by the pureness of thine hands. All right, let's see what the notes are, okay, here at the bottom. Only Eliphaz and Bildad participate in this, in this final cycle. Disregarding Job's previous argument, Eliphaz charges Job with specific sins, and he did. He didn't feed the people that was hungry. He denied folks water, okay, um, and appeals him to repent. Then he will be forgiven and have his prosperity restored. What may seem to be a beautiful call to repentance is, in fact, another accusation against Job. Eliphaz appears to be intent on theological arguments. 
His comfort has turned to condemnation, accusing Job of practical atheism. Wow, okay. Uh, I'd have to roll back over that to pick that up, all right? That last part about the practical atheism, all right? But I'm not going to <laughs> right now, all right? Job 23, the title of the chapter is Job Will Come Forth as Gold. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Okay, a lot of us are familiar with that. That's a common verse we would hear in the church, okay? Um, and it's a song by the Clark sisters, something about, you know, being tried in the fire and coming out as pure gold. So I'm going to read that again. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So he, again, you know, he, he is basically saying that God is doing all these things, to, these things, and then he's, he knows that, in other words, you know, he's testing me, but in his test, you know, in his trying me, I shall come forth as pure gold. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is, excuse me, but he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many sudden things are with I mean, excuse me, and many such things are with him. Therefore am I troubled at his presence, when I consider I am afraid of him. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me, because I was not cut off before the darkness, neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. Okay, well, I'm gonna read the notes on that too, all right? Job's seventh response ignores his friends, focusing his case toward God. And I did pick that up. He pretty much did not address Eliphaz, okay, and what he was saying about, you know, the continued argument, you know, that, you know, you're a sinner, you're wicked, you get what you deserve, in so many words, okay? Um, he repeats his longing for God and affirms God's righteousness. He confidently believes that if he could find God, he would put strength in him. He did say that here, and he did say that, you know, he's looking for God, but he can't find him. Remember earlier, okay, a few chapters back, he was, you know, God speak. God did not seem to be speaking to him, okay? I can't find him. He's trying me. He's putting me through all this. Nevertheless, I'm still going to come forth as pure gold, okay? Let's move on to chapter uh, 24, the title, God Seems Indifferent to the Wicked. And this is Job still talking, okay? Why seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they know him not see his days? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. They drive away the ass of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hide themselves together. Behold, as wild asses in the desert, go they forth to their work, rising betimes for a prey. The wilderness yieldeth food for them and for their children. They reap every one his corn in the field, and they gather the vintage of the wicked. They cause the naked to lodge without clothing. They that have no covering in the cold, they are wet with the showers of the mountains, and embrace the rock for want of a shelter. They pluck the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge of the poor. They cause him to go naked without clothing, and they take away the sheaf from the hungry, which make oil within their walls, and tread their winepress, and suffer thirst. 
Men groan from out of the city, and the soul of the wounded crieth out, yet God layeth not folly to them. There are those that rebel against the light. They know not the ways thereof, nor able in the paths thereof. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy, and in the night is a thief. The eye also of the adulterer waiteth for the twilight, saying, No eye shall see me, and disguiseth, disguiseth his face. In the dark they dig through houses, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. They know not the light. For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. He is swift as the waters. Their portion is cursed in the earth. He beholdeth not the way of the vineyards. Drought and heat consume the snow waters. So doth the grave those which have sinned. The womb shall forget him, the worm shall feed sweetly on him, he shall be no more remembered, and wickedness shall be broken as a tree. He evil entreateth the barren that beareth not, and doth not good to the widow. He draweth also the Almighty with his power, he riseth up, and no man is sure of life. Though it be given him to be in safety, whereon he resteth, yet his eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way as all other, and cut off as the tops of the ears of corns and corn. And if it be not so now, who will make me a liar and make my speech nothing worth? All right. All right, let's see. Notes. I'm going to read the notes for chapter 24. Continuing his soliloquy, Job complains against the violence God permits to occur in the earth. Okay, we do that. <laughs> such as the oppression of the innocent and the persecution of the defenseless by evil doers. He calls attention to the murderers and adulterers who perform their deeds in secret and seem to escape speedy judgment. In fact, it appears that God grants them security. Mm, isn't that interesting? In fact, it appears that God grants the wicked security. This is what Job is saying. Nothing new under the sun. People say these things, these types of things all the time. Okay. No new thought. It appears his own suffering has made him more sensitive to evil and general human suffering. Now he sees it. Okay. Being in the state that he's in. All right. Essentially, Job debates the age-old questions. How can a righteous God allow the ungodly to prosper? Here, we have it here. How? How do the wicked, the unrighteous, okay, those that cause hell all over the earth, you know, why does he allow them to prosper? Why is he giving them a covering and you know, making sure that they are right? Or allowing it? And why is there a such, excuse me, and why is there such a long delay in their punishment? Okay, uh, many of us have questioned that. Okay. Ain't no need to nobody acting like they haven't. Okay, or you know, only certain people uh, ask those kind of questions. People who are not of the faith, quote unquote. They don't believe in God. They're not righteous, and you know, whatever. Or of, of a particular religion or a particular faith. Please, Job was perfect in the sight of God. We saw that in chapter 1. Upright in the sight of God. Okay. Yet here, he's seeing in his suffering, okay, he's questioning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know I did nothing wrong. <laughs> I know I've been righteous. I know I've been per perfect before God. Now, here I am in this situation. Okay. And it seems as though God is, you know, in, in a sense, terrorizing me trying me for what I don't know but when I look out and see you know no matter what you say Eliphaz and Bill Dad and you know the other one no matter what y'all say that I must have done something wrong I must be you know wicked you know so on and so forth and I know that I'm not and when I and I these are your theological arguments that make no sense because we look and we can see with our own eyes that the wicked do prosper and they seem to be doing just fine and their children are doing just fine and their homestead is just fine and then you know they're prospering you know financially and so on and so forth and ain't thinking about God and ain't thinking about being you know people of righteousness what is this all about all right all right We'll move on to chapter 25.
the next video. Peace.